we gather to sing all his praises we gather to worship the king we gather to hear of his precious love his grace and to all lives he Good morning, everyone. Uh, we're uh, glad you joined us here today for worship, and we're going to do things a little bit different and, and kind of add uh, uh, a few things to our time. And this is Memorial Day weekend, so we're going to share a scripture reading, have prayer, and then have some emphasis on more Memorial Day, the Memorial Day weekend, and then we'll share a message today. We always begin in our services here, and you'll be able to. Uh, join us today, and we're going to read. We read Proverbs uh, each time, scripture reading at the beginning of our services, and we're going to do it at this time for you to join us. And we're going to read in Proverbs chapter 20, Proverbs chapter 20, and I'm going to share that through today. If you'll read along with me, I'll give you just a moment to find that, but we'll continue our reading as our church family reads in Proverbs 20. Penalties are prepared for mockers and beatings for the backs of fools. That's the end of Proverbs 19. We begin with 20. Wine is a mocker and a beer a brawler. Whoever is led astray by them is not wise. A king's wrath strikes terror like the roar of a lion. Those who anger him forfeit their lives. It is the one's honor to avoid strife, but every fool is quick to quarrel. Sluggers do not plow in season, so at harvest time they look but find nothing. The purposes of a person's heart are deep waters, but one who has insight draws them out. Many claim to have unfailing love, but a faithful person who can find. The righteous lead blameless lives. Blessed are their children after them. When a king sits on his throne to judge, he winnows out all evil with his eyes. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure? I am clean and without sin. Differing weights and differing measures, the Lord detests them both. Even small children are known by their actions. So is their conduct really pure and upright. Ears that hear and eyes that see, the Lord has made them both. Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake, and you will have food to spare. It's no good, it's no good, says the buyer, then goes off and boasts about the purchase. Gold there is, and rubies in abundance, but lips that speak knowledge are a rare jewel. Take the garment of one who puts up security for a stranger. Hold it in pledge if it is done for an outsider. Food gained by fraud tastes sweet but one end up, ends up with a mouth full of gravel. Plans are established by seeking advice, so if you wage war, obtain guidance. A gossip betrays a confidence, so avoid anyone who talks too much. If someone curses their father or mother, their lamp will be snuffed out in pitch darkness, and inheritance claimed too soon will not be blessed at the end. Do not say, I'll pay you back for this wrong. Wait for the Lord, and he will avenge you. The Lord detests differing weights, and dishonest scales do not please him. A person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? It is a trap to dedicate something rashly and only later to consider one's vows. A wise king winnows out the wicked. He drives the threshing wheel over them. The human spirit is the lamp of the Lord that sheds light on one's inmost being. Love and faithfulness keep a king safe. Through love his throne is made secure. The glory of young men is their strength. Gray hair is the splendor of the old. 
Blows and wounds scrub away evil, and beatings purge the inmost being. And that is Proverbs 20. Let's share a prayer this morning. Father, thank you for the privilege to be here today, and we thank you for your word. Lord, we've been faithful to be uh, students of your word, and in our church we begin our worship times with your scripture. As we continue in Proverbs, we're so thankful for the wonderful uh, lessons that is given, the words of wisdom. Let us take these to heart. We pray that you'll bless our time together today as we share Lord, we thank you for uh, the freedoms that we have in this country. And Lord, we, as this time and this weekend, we are thankful for uh, the sacrifices that have been made that have allowed us to have the freedom and the liberty, those who have made the ultimate sacrifice for freedom in this great land. Lord, I pray that you'll bless as we look into your word and we share together and we pray for our time today. Thank you again for the scripture reading and apply it to our hearts. Let us be people of your word and not just hearers, but doers of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to take just a moment today, and uh, which is a little different than our normal times, uh, but I would like to extend for you. We have many that, that watch us, and uh, we'd like to invite you, if you don't have a church, we want to take that time this morning. We want you to know that you're welcome here at South Highland Baptist Church and join our family. And if you have a church, be there. We appreciate your prayers and your support. But if you're considering a church family, we'd love you to come in person and be, visit with us and be here in our church. Um, I want to share a, another prayer today. In our church, we have special time of prayer. This church has always had a history, well, a testimony of being a praying church, we all should be. And uh, I have here a prayer bulletin or a worship guide, but in it contains a lot of different various categories and that we're going to pray over today. Uh, a lot of those deal with just general prayer requests, uh, spiritual needs, our missionaries, uh, miscellaneous needs, those of lost loved ones, uh, all types of things, our country. And we just are faithful to pray. And we'd like to join, ask you to join us today as we pray for these various areas. And we also uh, also ask for those that may be within our fellowship or that may come with a need that would be really not where they could share it, but an unspoken request, and we want to include those. Um, we are certainly want to be a lighthouse in the community right here, uh, really right here near downtown Gadsden. And we just want to show love to the community, and we pray for our community. And uh, we want to do that right now, but we to include all the names and all the needs that we have. And you join me again in another prayer today. Father God, we thank you for, again, the privilege to be here. And we thank you for a special prayer time. Lord, we lift these names to you. Uh, we pray that you'll be with those within our church uh, that are going through uh, uh, physical situations and needs that they have. Uh, we know friends that are going through times of transition right now. We'll pray. We pray right now that you'll bless uh, the graduates uh, in our area, uh, both college and, and middle school and elementary graduates and high school graduates. And as they move on to new challenges, Lord, we uh, pray that you'll bless them. And this has been a special time around this time of the year, and we ask that you'll bless those and be with each one of them. We thank you for the privilege that we can come and approach you and, Lord, we pray that you'll be with unspoken requests. Lord, I pray that you'll touch those. I pray that you'll touch uh, our community here. And, Lord, as we continue to minister, uh, we just want them to see uh, your love, Lord. And let us be faithful in that. And, Lord, let all that we do be guided by you and be directed by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for prayer, Lord. And we pray that you'll be with uh, the, the needs that, that are upon hearts today, Lord, within our fellowship. Lord, we thank those that are facing cancer and other health issues and are walking through that right now. And, Lord, I pray that you'll be with them. Touch them in a very special way. We think of one particular family that has had a tragic loss even in these days. Lord, I pray that you'll continue to uh, let them feel your very special presence. And, Lord, be with them as you've always been. 
Lord, let them feel your special touch right now. We ask again, Lord, that you'll bless the time that we share together today. Lord, I pray as those that are watching us today, I pray that you'll uh, move toward decisions and, and lead them toward decisions, whatever they may be, uh, for uh, uh, things that involved in their Christian life, or if there's a, those today that do not know you as their Savior, I pray that they will trust you and they'll make that decision to join your family, Lord. And Lord, admit and believe and confess and come into the family. Lord, again, we thank you for prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, as we've mentioned already, uh, we this is uh, Memorial Day weekend, and uh, we want to take just a, a little bit of time right now and share just a, really a Memorial Day emphasis, kind of in a couple of ways. But we are, uh, in our church, we want to make sure we, uh, in any churches that I've served in when it comes, but we certainly are thankful for the freedoms we have and for those that have given the ultimate sacrifice. I wanted to share with you uh, a couple of things and then share a prayer as we take this time now with the emphasis on Memorial Day. I came across a reading, and it's very factual, but the unique part about it, it was written in, from a child's perspective. You'll notice kind of how the words were given and how it's pinned and put together. But I thought it was fitting to share when you give a description of Memorial Day because there are people today uh, within, even, within our country that don't really understand Memorial Day. Uh, we, we look at the emphasis in Veterans Day and those who serve and who are continuing to serve. But, more, but, but Memorial Day has that idea by definition, memorial. And this young person pinned this down and I'm going to read it. It's, 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 it's perfect for this particular time, but I loved it when it had the childlike sound to it. So they put it this way. Memorial Day is a holiday that is celebrated on the last Monday in May. On Memorial Day, we honor the men and women who have died in wars while serving in America's armed forces. The armed forces include the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. Memorial Day was originally called Decoration Day. It began when people wanted to remember the thousands of soldiers who died in the Civil War. They placed flowers and flags on the soldiers' graves on Decoration Day. Many things changed since that day. Now on Memorial Day, a ceremony is held at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia, where thousands of people from the armed forces are buried. During the ceremony, the President of the United States places a wreath at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. The Tomb of the Unknown is a place where soldiers are buried with names that are not known. A song is played by a bugler to honor those who have passed. And I thought that from that perspective, is factual, but it was so unique because you felt, uh, as I read that, I saw this person is seeing that, but Memorial Day, and that describes it. Memorial Day had those times from direct Decoration Day on through the years with different proclamations that are made, but we certain as it was summed up, it is those who have passed serving our country in the armed forces, and we're certainly grateful for the freedoms that we have in that oh beautiful for heroes proved in liberating strife who more than self their country loved and mercy more than life america america May God thy gold refine Till all success be nobleness And every gain divine America, America God shed his grace on thee and crown thy good 
with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Let's pray. On this Memorial Day weekend, Lord, we pray for those who courageously laid down their lives, or the family of those who courageously laid down their lives for the cause of freedom. May the example of these serve as an inspiration to the selfless love of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Bless the families of these fallen troops and fill their homes, fill their lives, fill the moments that they now spend in loneliness or emptiness. Fill their lives with your special peace and strength that only you can give. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to look into our sermon today. Our sermon is going to be in Joshua. <clears throat> I was praying about in a Memorial Day weekend and on this particular time of kind of what direction to go, but God took me to Joshua, and we're going to be looking today in just a, a few minutes with some ideas here that Joshua gave at a special point. We're going to be looking at Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4. If you'll turn there with me and find that this morning. Joshua 4. And the children of Israel have come up to a point here, and they have seen several particular events in their history that they'll go back and be thinking about. They've now come up to the Jordan River, and a special event is going to occur. Many of you already know they're coming up. I'll go back in history a little bit that they had also had been involved in water once before with the children of Israel, as you know. They had come out of Egypt, and they came to the Red Sea. And we know that God parted the Red Sea, and they walked across. They've come to a point here now that they've come to the Jordan River. And we see in chapter 3 of Joshua that they're giving that. We come to Joshua 4 now. And we want to read the passage that he gives. Today we want to be thinking about this. Kind of an unusual thing uh, for Memorial Day weekend uh, with the direction we could be talking about. Uh, we need God in America. We certainly do. But today, is, as we were looking into this passage, we see some things that, that may sound a little bit different when we think of Memorial Day. But today we want to have a time of remembrance. Not only for just in the sharing as we did today in the, in the holiday that our country, where we honor. But yet when we look here in Joshua, there are some things here. And an interesting day, things that this story will bring out, it will bring out some rocks. The scripture says stones. But we're going to look at some remembrance rocks. Remembrance rocks. The scripture refers to them as stones. We'll share that today. And give that, but remember us rocks. Where in this uh, situation do you see our day as a Christian, we fitting in? This deals with the children of Israel. They're coming to this point. God is working here. But I want to say to you today, in the idea of remembrance rocks, I want us to think, how has God stepped in and been there for you? How has he stepped in and been there for you? He was... For them, he just did another miracle involved them crossing the Jordan River. But God has stepped in for you, and he stepped in for us, and he stepped in for me. But there's sometimes those times that we need to go back. Notice the pastor didn't say live in the past. That's different. But we go back and we know where God brought us from and how we see and then we share. Because sometimes that can be a blessing to someone else. So when we think of remembrance and memorial as we look at our country, let's think today in the Christian realm, how can we look from this story and remember those things? Remember it's rocks. Let's look at the passage now. 
When the whole nation had finished crossing the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Choose twelve men from among the people, one from each tribe. Spiritual significance there. And tell them to take up twelve stones from the middle of the Jordan, from right where the priests are standing, and carrying them over with you, and put them down at the place where you stay tonight. So Joshua called together the twelve men he had appointed from the Israelites, one from each tribe, and said to them, Go over before the ark of the Lord your God in the middle of the Jordan. Each of you is to take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, to serve as a son among you. In the future, when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan was cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to, to the people of Israel forever. Thus we come to that word memorial that we fittingly consider that is even misunderstood in a holiday that we have within our country. We see here the, a memorial that they're saying to them, go and do this and let them serve. These stones serve as a memorial. In the context is to the event that the children had went through. Then back to what God had brought them through. They were to share with them and tell your children's children that. God is calling us today to take a moment and remember the times that he may have not necessarily walked you through a Jordan River or a Coosa River, being in our area, but he certainly walked you through something and was with you with something just as serious for your life. And there's those times that you remember those and you share those. And we see how God has brought you through things. So today when we look at remembrance rocks, here's some rocks we find from here that I hope you'll get today. Number one, here's one of the rocks you can put down. He said put down stones. Now they had 12. We're only going to look at five today. Just five for the sake of our wall. What can we look at? Here's a stone. Here's a rock that you can put down. What God has done for us. What God has done for me. Verse number 7. Verse number 7 says, when it, when it crossed the Jordan, the waters of the J Jordan were cut off. These stones are to be a memorial to the people of Israel forever. Forever. That's a big word. It's a good word. But forever means, I could, I could go and tell you the big definition if I want to, forever means forever. Forever means we're going from this point on. So from this point on, this event has happened, and you're going to share this for what God did. Jehovah God did for the people. Our encouragement today to you, as you're watching, as, as you're listening, the encouragement today is put that stone down. Put that rock down of remembrance and know what God has done for you and be appreciative. Thank the Lord. So many of the things that we see and we go through, there's such a spirit of, 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 of ungratefulness when God has done a work. And so many times feel like they, the reason there's no spiritual success, because we don't even come to know we have a need. We've got it. We have it. And we don't turn to God when he is there to meet our needs. And he goes further than that. When he does meet our needs, when he leads us in those darkest nights, and he brings us to the light with things that we're facing in our lives as we walk for him, then we just brush it off almost. And we move on. Well, thank you, God. You know, that was good. I'm glad you did that. But what God has done... The memorial here was to say, look what Jehovah did. He did, a, he did a miracle. He allowed them to walk through. 
and you share this, and you continue to share the praise toward him forever and ever and ever, and we should live in that. Put down a stone. Put down a rock. Have a rock of remembrance of what God has done for you and what God has done for me. We miss that many times. We move along with the things we have, the pace that comes. Thank you, Lord. There's a little simple song. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. We must begin there. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord. What's God done for you? Are you grateful? Are you thankful? Do you remember? Do you make that a memorial? And be able to say, hey, let me tell you what God did. Let me know what door God opened. But put that stone of remembrance, that rock of remembrance in what God has done for you. Number two. The scripture says in verse 6 and 7 in this story, he's, he's talking about the stones and he comes to 6 and 7. What do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow of the Jordan, now up above that, I'm sorry, to serve as a sign among you in the future when your children ask you, what do these stones mean? Tell them that the flow, and it says give a description. You share, here's the, here's, the, here's the rock. Here's the remembrance rock we can put down and get today. I hope you'll get it. We can share our faith with our children and our children's children. Well, Brother Mike, what about, no, well, I don't have these children. You understand, we share. But the scripture here in the context said, share with your children. Let the heritage spread on. Let the gratefulness, the, the work that we have seen, be shared from generation to generation. Today, we take that and we remember that rock here and put that stone there. Here it is. We share our faith. We share our faith. We begin with our home, our children. But we share our faith in our community. We share our faith around, around our world. Scripture says, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts. We share our faith. But as they were giving this word, as this story gives this, it said, you tell your children, those that are coming, let them hear in your household what Jehovah has done. And we worship him and we praise him and we're thankful for him. Let your children hear this. We just saw this and be and he gave he gave in this story it gives great detail. It didn't just give general information. It said you tell them what did it say that the flow of the river was stopped. That's cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord when it crossed the Jordan. The waters of Jordan were cut off. Sharing our faith. Sharing our faith. He said share the story of this with your children. We can get this for today's day and know that this is a rock of remembrance that we share. We've got to be faithful in doing that. Number three, we see, we're going to go over a little bit in verse 24. Go to verse 24. And we see, <clears throat> it goes further in the, in the follow-up to the story that had occurred. And in verse 24, he said, he did this so that all the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful, and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Now, how what what remembrance rock would be that? It would be that this serves to them. You need to understand this God is in control. This God did this wonderful miracle, and you worship him. He is awesome. And it says here, the scripture here uses, fear the Lord your God. Where do we connect it in our thought for remembrance rocks? God works as a signpost to a lost world. People, people are lost. I know people put different tags and uh, they're confused. They put this on them. But the scripture says, Saved people 
and lost people, lost being without Jesus Christ. And we must present the word so that they can have hope. It serves God working here, serves as a signpost to the lost world. And that God is a great God. He is an awesome God. And he works and he shows and he moves his hand. He changes things. He changes lives. He changes circumstances. This event in that time served to them as a signpost. It does the same for us today. That, re that number, that third remembrance rock would be a signpost to a lost world. Where is our burden? There are tears that come, and they're, they're rightfully so, for many things, and that's okay. But when have we come so burdened that we had tears for a lost world? Tears for the things that are, that are so, so anti-God and that there's so many people that need God. The fourth thing we see in verse number 8, another remembrance rock you can get today, verse number 8, let's go back to it. In verse number 8, it says, So the Israelites did as Joshua commanded them. They took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the Israelites, as the Lord had told Joshua, and they carried them over with them to their camp, where they put them down. Now it steps into him saying to them in the story, he said they, that he said he gave them a command, and they took 12 stones from the middle of the Jordan. And they went and they carried them over to the camp, and they put them down, and they set the 12 stones. What do we see there is that as a remembrance rock? Someone had to be carrying those stones, personally taking those stones and putting them down. And there was that remembrance, that still memorial of how God had worked. Here's a remembrance rock you can take today with you. There needs to be a time of renewing personal commitment. A time of renewing personal commitment. Taking that stone, they took those stones and placed them. As, as Joshua had given the instructions, they walked personally and put those into places Joshua had given them to do. There's those times in our lives that we can take that and that, that, that remembrance rock or stone, as you might want to say. And I'm going to say, Lord, I've wandered a little bit. I'm not even where I should have been. And I'm committing. Now, I'm not talking about salvation on this point, on this rock. I'm saying that point you're saved. You're a believer. You know, but you just got, you just got tired. You got those things that just came upon you. And things were just heavy. Whatever reason that may, know that God is there. Just as the picture in the New Testament, when you have a wavering sun and the sun comes on, God is there. He has open arms for you to come back in that time of restoration. A time of renewing of personal commitment. The scripture teaches us that we do all to the glory of God. Everything we do, whatsoever we do, word or deed, do all to the glory of God. Romans 12, 1 and 2 gives us that we are to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Many people stop and say, well, good, that's all I got to do. The scripture says that is your reasonable service. Oh, Brother Mike, I, 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 I'm lived in that, and this came along, and this hurt, and this was thing, and that happened, and this. Renew that time. Come back and say, look, I want to be what God wants me to be. Lord, you use me. I want to please you with all I have. And come back to that point and take that rock, take that stone, as they did, and put it out in that area. You take that personal time that you have, and you give a point and a commitment, a word of commitment. That's up to you and the Lord. But you know today is a good day for that. Today is a good day when we think of remembrance and memorial to renew personal commitment. Then the last remembrance rock we see in verse 19 and 20. I want to look at that. 
In verse 19 and 20, he gives, On the tenth day of the month, the people went up from Jordan and camped in Gilgal on the eastern border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal, Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, In the future, when your descendants ask your parents, What do these stones mean? Tell them, Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. What words? He shared Red Sea and God worked in this. And at Gilgal, they're moving on their journey. He said, you, you remember what God has done. Now, what would be our fifth remembrance rock today? You know, the children of Israel were God's chosen people. Or are, they are God's chosen people. But we find that God would do a miracle and God would work and lead them. And they would then turn back. You remember? There would be times that Moses was there. Moses was leading them. They crossed over the Red Sea, got on the other side. And then they began to complain. Well, we're over here. Or they got to the Red Sea. Now, got on the other side. They were celebrating when they were on the other. They got to the Red Oh, he brought us out here. He brought us out here. Now we're going to die. But God showed up and the Red Sea, and they walked through on dry land. Notice I said they walked through on dry land. Not a, This is another sermon, but many people with Hollywood versions and things show a little dust and a little dampness. They walked over on dry land. Scripture says there was none there. Water was parted. They walked over. The awesome God, Jehovah God, led them through. They go and they move further, and they go other times even in their journeys. They'd find things that wasn't what they thought they would that it ought to be, and they would begin to murmur and complain. It went on in their history where uh, things would happen and God would work, and then they would go into cap. They even went into captivity. Then God would show up, and there'd be good things, and they would still complain. So you see that wavering even with them. Here's our last remembrance rock. Put this rock down. Today, roll away, rolling away, old defeats. Well, what, does that, what does that mean, Brother Mike? Roll away, old defeats. Know that God is going to bring you through. There may be those things that where you've been and you felt a failure, and you felt those things that were negative. But you put that stone down, you put that rock down, and you remember God is God. He's a good God. Many times in our Christian walk, if we're not careful, we will make God, or we will make the devil all-knowing. The devil's not all-knowing. The devil knows only what we hold on to, some of those things that we do. And he comes and he brings those things, well, this is what you did once. This is what happened here. God says he wipes that away and we must live. Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. So put a remembrance rock down to the old way. I could not close the sermon today with, to be, with the idea of the salvation of the old way and share that the scripture teaches the way to salvation but yet it says, old is passed away, and new, all is becoming new. If you haven't done that in that stone, putting that down for salvation, but more so today with that recommitment or the commitment of your life, put that stone down of rolling away old defeats. Jesus said he came to give life and to give it more abundantly. The devil says he came to steal, kill, and destroy. There is joy in serving Christ. 
Jesus said he came to give abundant life, and we have that. If you feel those things or feel that point of defeat, know that there is victory in Jesus. And you can take that rememberous rock of the old ways of, of defeat are gone, and we're looking to the new ways of victory. In this story that we read here, you saw several times where it said, tell your children, know this to what your God has done. Your God has done. Our God is working today. He is the same God today as he was then. And he continues to work. And he wants you to live a life above those circumstances. Live in him. Live strong. And when you come to that remembrance rock of defeat, put that rock down. Put that stone down. Look at that and go, old ways are gone. I'm new. I'm living. And I'm going to be there as I should be. You know, Jesus didn't quit on us. He went to the cross. And so many times, quit comes too much into our lives as the Christian faith and the Christian walk. Well, we must live true in faith to him. So five remembrance rocks today that you can take with you. What God has done. Sharing our faith with the children. Signpost to a lost world. A stone of renewing personal commitment. And the stone or the remembrance rock of rolling away old defeats. I could ask you today in closing, take some time and look back at what I call those standout times. Standout times. Of those times when God worked in your life. And he is there to continue to work. I was in a conversation even today, and I thought how fitting it was. And a person was sharing, two people were sharing, special people were sharing. And a comment was made, do you, do you remember, uh, speaking to a daughter, do you remember when do you remember when we went to that place and saw this and this and this? And you could almost see that going, I'm thinking about that. And then I went, then did I hear quickly, I remember that. And then I hear how many years they had gone to go back to that. But there had been, do you remember that? That was something that was just a life memory for these individuals. But it spoke to me today to know someone comes in the sense of our Christian faith and the walk that we have. Do you remember? Oh, I remember that. And God took me here. And this is where I am now. And this is where God's going to take me to. But I saw that light. I saw the face of this individual today just light up. Went, oh, yeah, I remember that. That's when we went this. And it was a joyous time. That can be the same for our Christian faith, for our Christian walk. You could go back and remember that. And then when you look and go back and there's those old defeat, those are not there. They're gone. They're in the past. Live out your life to bring glory to God. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for the privilege to share today. Lord, thank you for these scriptures. And Lord, I pray that you'll move us, Lord, and we'll place rocks, Lord, place stones, to know that these are, the, these are points of remembrance for us. And so many more could be given. But I pray that you'll bless these thoughts today. Lord, I want to be a blessing. And I pray today that you've used these and used your word to touch these folks and touch these lives. We thank you for the privilege again to serve you. And our prayer is to do all for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.